Good evening, Ms. Heron, Mr. Loftus. Come on, you know how to unclick. Come on now. Hello, Mr. Loftus. Hello. How's everyone doing? Doing good. How are you? Just fine, just fine. Hi guys. Hello, Ms. Brown, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing good. Changing my name so I'm not Daniel anymore. <laughs> oh, I'll let you do that then. I was about to do the same thing. Do we have you, Mr. Loftus, Ms. Heron, and Mr. Pettyjohn? Mr. Pettyjohn is here, I haven't seen him in a while. Trying to find well, my room. on the last meeting, I was uh, trying to get home before the ice storm hit. We had to change our travel plans. Oh, it's good to see you though. I think it's good to be back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we plug it up. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, one, two, three. No, we need one. Yeah. 
it's a pretty low bar for a, uh, I know we've got enough for quorum. Yeah, we only need four, right? Who's Michael's iPad? I don't know. Do you want to tell us who you are and we can rename you to match? It's Michael Phillips. I'm with Cole. Yeah. Oh, hi. Hi, <laughs> hi everyone. Hey, all we all vacation, so. Yeah, you only need three for a quorum. So you technically do have a quorum. Uh, sometimes in these Zoom meetings, they'll give just a couple extra minutes for everybody to join. If you are expecting Ms. Yancey and Ms. Mould, then um, that's up to you as the chairperson, Ms. Brown. Should we wait a few more minutes for them? Or should we proceed? Uh, let's go on a second. I'm all um, entering right now. Oh, good. See, yay. <coughs> Has anybody heard from Ms. Yancey whether we're expecting her or not? I haven't heard anything from her. She'll be here. I just talked to her. Okay. Sometimes she just runs a couple minutes late, so she usually gets here. Well, in this case, it's the, we're, we're meeting one week off, right? I know my, my reminder didn't come up because I have a reminder set for every. Yeah. Right, right, yeah, one week off. I make sure everybody knew though. I, I oh. sent out, I called everybody too. Yeah, I think council kept uh, stealing meeting meeting dates uh, for some of the boards and then we had the winter storm as well. You didn't call me, Alana. I texted your number that, well, the one I have for you in my phone anyway. Uh, I, that's not my number, probably not my number anymore. I've, I've texted you a couple of times. You well, have I have a new number too. <laughs> I'll get it to you though. That way we, we have each other. There's Miss Rebecca. Hi. If you guys need to update your contact information, if you email the city clerk, cityclerk at cityoflamarck.org, she can update that on the Words and Commission spreadsheet um, because sometimes we try to call you guys and remind you too. Um, it's just up to you if you want to give that information, but if you want it updated, that's an easy way to do it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I made sure that everybody that I had in my phone at least um, had my new number, but I guess it didn't really work with you, PJ, <laughs> if I was texting a wrong number from my new one. I wonder okay. why you wouldn't call me back. Yeah, it's not that's not like me, is it? Okay, it is what time is it? It's six oh four. Is everybody okay with starting? And if Miss Kim comes in, she comes in. Here here she is, right here. Oh good, yay. Okay. We are all here then? We are all here. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, Cause I can't see everybody now that you screen Jared. Um, okay. I guess I will call this meeting of the Keep Mark Beautiful Commission on March 17th, 2021 to order at 6.05 PM. And moving on to roll call, we have myself, um, Miss Catherine Keith is here, Miss Rebecca Mould is here, Mr. Loftus is here, Miss Yancey is here, yes, yeah. Yes. Mr. Petty John is here. Okay. Three citizens participation, do we have any comments from citizens other than those of us I know are joining for certain awards? You do not have any uh, public on here that are, are not employees of the city. 
Okay, awesome. All right, moving on to number four, approval of meeting minutes for the minutes of February 10th, 2021. Is there any discussion on those meeting minutes? I make a motion to uh, approve the minutes. Is there a second? A second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, approving the minutes of February 10th passed on to reports, the 5A, the financial report. I believe Miss Rebecca, that got handed to you, didn't it? Financial? Yes. Oh my God. I really do apologize, guys. I lost my uh, my brother that I was very close to with COVID and I've oh. not just been in the mindset. So I apologize. I did not, um, I haven't been myself for a month. Oh, uh, I, can imagine. So I will get that right now. Uh, the financial, where are my, here's my notes. I'm so sorry. I am. No, I'm so sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry to hear that. I, They're praying for you. Thank you. Yeah, he was only 59. Um, okay, here it is right here. I guess the financial agenda. Here we go. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. I apologize. I am not organized with this. So it looks um, like this. It's in your packet if you would just like to read from there. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm looking at on my packet here. I didn't print it out. I'm on my. I have two computers. Yeah. While I'm working, so and um, I see this email. Okay, let me get back to this. Here, right here, put it up for you, Rebecca. Okay, there it is. Sorry, guys. No. I'll put it next month. Um, beginning um, cash and investments balance, it was $42,658.32. Um, it's great to see we got donations of $573, and it looks like an additional donation of 18 so that brought revenues to 591 And then our membership dues um, that we have to pay is 175 and um Ending cash and investments is $43,074.32 as of February 28th of 2021. Awesome. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Sorry, guys. Oh, no, we're sorry. I, I am so sorry to hear about your brother. Our hearts are with you. Um, moving on to 5B, the waste management report. Do we have any discussion about the waste management report? Has anybody? Alana, if you're talking, I don't think we can hear you. It looks good to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can hear it. Okay. Um, I noticed too that our special waste collections, the hazardous material, the at your door service that Miss Colleen kindly showed me one day, um, has gone way down. So maybe we should try to push that and talking to people around and about so that we can make sure that they know about that so that batteries don't end up in the landfill. Um, other than that, it looks good to me. No more discussion on the waste management report. Okay, um, moving on to six, item six awards. 6A recognition of good neighbor awards. We have one for Esther Bolton for her service to the community as city receptionist and for always looking out for the residents of Briar Meadow. When was she, um, Miss Yancey, you, you, um, oh, recognized her. Am I correct? This is for Cheryl and Esther, correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, Esther is my next door neighbor, and I don't know if you all know, she was a city receptionist for about three or four years, and she's been really ill uh, lately. And uh, she's our watchdog on our street, on Meadow Lane. She had been, and boy, do we miss her vision. So I just wanted to give her that award. Um, and then Cheryl is kind of like the community watchdog. Uh, she's a fellow UT Longhorn. 
And we used to work together at uh, Lamarck Middle School and she has a heart for special needs children and she still does a lot in the community as well. And uh, I've, I've, I've talked to them off and on uh, throughout the years and I just wanted to recognize their efforts. They're both getting older. And I think this is a good time to recognize our elders that have been longtime players in uh, helping Lamarck be a better city. That's awesome. Thank you, Miss Nancy. Um, keep praying for Esther. Keep praying for her. We will be. Um, moving on to number three, Mr. Joseph Lowry for going above and beyond during the winter storm by providing free hot meals to the community for three straight days. I think we all we're witness to the generosity of Joseph Lowry, as well as other people in the community that um, that had that huge outpouring of, of love and help. Um, so kudos to him. He did an amazing yeah. job. Um, he did, and it was yeah. cold. And yeah. Was cold. yeah. But, freezing out there, but he's from the north, so he can do it. <laughs> uh, our next one is for Miss Lori Stokes Walsh. Um, for reaching out to LMPD to donate blankets to the homeless before the freeze came in. This one came in from Ms. Tamara Smith from the Parks Board. Um, we noticed her on the city group page um, and she really, um, uh, she really coordinated a drive to get blankets out there. So, she, so um, she's quite deserving of that award. And finally, on number five, we have um, Miss Cecilia Fields, Miss Lakeisha Stinson, and Mr. Michael Phillips of code enforcement. And I don't think code enforcement is the respect that they deserve. Um, these guys went above and beyond. They always do welfare checks on the elders in the community, but um, during the storm, they went above and beyond to get blankets, sweatshirts out to people. Um, using money out of their own pocket. So to the three of you, I want to virtually high five and thank you so much because what you did made a, made a huge difference to some of the people in the community that don't have anyone, they live alone. So I'm um, claps for you guys. I know you guys are here with us. <laughs> so. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know what we would do without code enforcement. We love you guys. Um, okay, on to our old business, 7A, discussion, possible action to determine the commission attendees and approve expenditures for Keep Texas Beautiful Conference. The KTB conference will be online again this year, just like it was last year, the same platform. Um, I assume all of us will be attending and there is a cost of $99 per commissioner. Which I don't, we had a, um, we were sent an invoice from Sarah over at KTB. Miss Kathleen, do you know the exact amount that that came out to by chance? I believe it was $594 for all the commissioners to go down. Okay. okay. Um, so do I have, can I have a motion to accept the expenditure for all six commissioners to attend this year's Keep Texas Beautiful Conference at the cost of $594? Make a motion. This is Kathy. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion carries. Can't wait to see everybody digitally again at the conference. On to our new business. Um, 7A, discussion, possible action regarding approval of expenditure to pay KTB affiliate dues. Those I believe have already been paid in your packets. We have the invoice. Um, for it, so can I have, and it's 100, our dues are $175, that was noted on the financial statement too. Um, can I get a motion to approve the $175 for our affiliate fees? I'll make a motion. Motion to approve. <laughs> I think we have a motion in a second there with them. 
Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Okay, motion passes. All right, 7B, discussion, possible action um, for amending the KLMBC calendar by changing the date to May 1st for the internal start of Paint the Town program. Miss Kathleen, that that where are we going to kick it off on May first then? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll kick it off. We'll we'll kick it off then. May first. Colleen, you you got that date down? Yes, I have the date. I'm adding it to the annual promotion schedule. We are have some great marketing already for that. If you recall, it's a little house that has a paint roller, roller. brush coming down off of it. If that's okay with you guys, I'll just do that. It was very engaging and people liked it last time. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. I, I, I made some corrections on that because you did it last year and for you to, to read the added the dates and get some things off. Probably. Okay, I'll get with like you. You're on vacation now, so. Okay, I'll get with you on that. That should be quick to update. Oh, yeah. Okay. If you're mad. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that is that is that on that one. Do I have a motion to approve the moving of Paint the Town to May 1st on our annual calendar? Yes. Mr. Uh, I have a question. Do, oh, do yeah. We have, do we have an agreement so that, I know we've had some, I know we didn't do it last time, but do we have any kind of agreement that, that to give somebody that we sign and they sign so they understand the rules of the... Uh, program yeah, we do. they have to fill out an application and there's okay. requirements for that okay and other documents they have to sh bring to us okay excellent thank you sorry thanks for catching him dear i can't see everybody <laughs> okay um so i do i did hear a motion to approve moving it to may 1st yes yes and a second uh, second all in favor? Aye. Aye. One, two, one, two, three, four. Um, Sierra, can I combine C through F and then go and approve all of them? Yes. Okay. Yes, you can. Okay. Um, just want to make sure I'm doing it right. Okay. Um, all right. On to item C. We'll go C through F. Um, item C, discussion possible action to approve expenditures of up to $1,000 for spring cleanup uh, trash off supplies and marketing. Um, Colleen has already done some amazing marketing for the trash off, but the graphics are great this, this year. Um, We've already got all our supplies from Pete Texas Beautiful and the expenditure for food comes in at $100 even. Um, it's just what we did last time. So um, I think, does that keep us under that $1,000 with Colleen, with your marketing? Yes, the budget is set not to exceed $1,000. So you still have about nine days going on your campaign. It's it's going well, you're getting a lot of engagement. Let me see. Um, yeah, yeah, you have nine days left. You've reached 4,400 people so far. Um, wow. So awesome. it's going good. It's getting a lot of shares. I'll keep an eye on it. We may adjust a little later, okay. but it's going good. Okay, awesome. All right. Um, on to item D, discussion, possible action, amending the KLMBC annual calendar by adding the date for shred day as April 10th, 2021, and to approve expenditures of up to $1,000 for supplies and marketing. Now, we're Mr. Loftus is taking on shred day. This will be his baby. Are you excited? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um so since we don't really need supplies for shred day because it's shred day the um a thousand dollars is pretty much strictly devoted to advertising that event since it's it's a new event that way people know about it 
um, the spreader. And we paid for that in the past. Um, this is we get it once a year. Um, and uh, yeah, we get it once a year, and then the city gets it the other time of the year. So this will be our time of year that we get it, but we have just decided to section it off on its own um, because it creates so much of a traffic flow and jam problem in the parking lot that it's really hard to get people in and out in an efficient manner. Um, but people do love Shred Day and everyone, I swear, in the city comes for Shred Day. So having it as its own little event is best for I was just concerned that we had enough money to pay for it. That's fine. Yeah, this this one this one is the one that we get um that we get from waste management. So we're good. Um and I believe everything's already been handled for that too. Um E discussion possible action to approve expenditures of up to three thousand dollars for beautify the bayou supplies and marketing. Um that three thousand dollars includes marketing, obviously. Um not quite, baby. Hold on. Uh lunch for volunteers. And we are ordering or have ordered new grabbers for the volunteers out at the lake. Oh, oh, okay, hold on, baby. Um, do, do, do. And then do we have any discussion on Beautify the Bayou before I move on real quick? Okay. Um, item F, discussion, possible action to authorize expenditures of up to $500 for Earth Day participation. And I believe, Ms. Kathy, are you here with us again? Yes, I'm here. We have, do we have everything? Okay. That we um, I, well, I personally bought the majority of the stuff that we, we needed. Okay. We weren't sure about getting all this done timely, but I would like to maybe give um, plants away. And I don't have that covered. Is that something we could do in a short amount of time? Yeah, if we've got $500, we can definitely go and uh, buy a couple flats of plants so that each of the kids could have a little plant to take home. Can, can you tell us, uh, so somebody remind me real quick, what's the, the day of the Earth Day event? Uh, it's April 22nd is what the library has decided. So I got I got some information, sorry to interject. If they're doing seed, take home seed bombs. So all the kids will get to take yes. like a plant related. The activity. library said they're doing take home seed bombs? Yeah, they said recycling the marketing. Uh, no, that was what I was doing. Okay. Well, in the marketing, I don't know who's doing it, but in the marketing, it's saying recycling Olympics, take home seed bombs and um, something. That's, that's us then, Kathy, don't worry. That's okay. That's from the meeting we had with um, um, okay. the ladies from the library. Yeah, he must be just, yeah. Colleen, you must have just gotten just stuff from them. I got an the update from Amy. Yeah, yeah cool. Um, <laughs> So what we would what we would need on the procurement side of things is um, if you're going to buy the seed bombs from somewhere in particular, um, we just need that information as soon as possible. If you can give us the um, if you have three places you want us to to call and get quotes on um, for a specific seed bomb that you're looking for, then we can do that and get that taken care of in order. Actually, I've already paid for that myself and I have all the materials. All that I would be asking for is just some regular little flower bed, you know, bedding plants, like from Lowe's or Walmart or whatever, that we could give the kids a little plant and maybe a little terracotta pot to put them in. Okay. Um, do we have estimates of what that's going to cost and how many you'd want bought? Um, I'm not sure how many kids have been there in the past for Earth Day. Does anybody have an idea? They plan, they said for about a hundred or so. Oh Lord. Okay. Well, I definitely don't have enough supplies for 100 kids. I well, probably have enough supplies for 10. 
um, I saw something really cool at the um, livestock show and rodeo one time for kids. So they gave a sunflower seed. They made like a little sunflower seed kit, and it's very inexpensive because sunflower seeds aren't you know that much money. And if they water it, it will grow. And then if they plant it in their house, it turns into this big, miraculous, beautiful uh, flower. So that could be a cost saving way, a little bit less expensive, but still teach kids about how to grow things and their pollinator plants and all of that. Just an idea. We can get, yeah, sure. we can get, can get them. That's great. really super cheap on Amazon packs of 50 of them for like $25. And I bought you- them for show them how to plant it, you know, put the dirt in the cup, put the seed, water it, you know. Yeah, we'll just need, um, Ms. Heron, is this your, are you the committee chairperson? Is that correct? Correct. So if you'll, if you'll send the details to the city staff so they can order those with the P card, uh, P cards on Amazon take just a little bit of time, but we, we could potentially do it. Um, but if, okay. Yeah. If you'll send them the specifics, what we can do to get those ordered. They don't have to get three quotes. Well, so we'll we'll take what the details are, and then yeah, we will probably have to get three quotes. But usually, once you have the details from Amazon, you can run a search for it in some other places, and we can verify the price. But yeah, we just we we're gonna need some specifics on what you want. Um, like I said, an, an Amazon. Um, detail of the particular product should give us enough to be able to do what we need to do on procurement. It's going to be a little bit tight on time, but we'll see what we can do. Okay. okay. Um, and then we have the bags that we're decorating too, which, so we have those, right, Kathy, those are, I have those. Um, yes, I've got some too. I bought some markers, but not enough for a hundred kids if that's what they're preparing for. I have a ton. I've got a ton of more. Well, it'll it's the numbers they say are are kind of a little flippant because of covid and school and the time and stuff like that so um i think they they said in total they had 150 people out i don't think that number necessarily was 150 children but 150 patrons in general so uses the last the last event that i did over there we probably had 10 kids Right. So when it, I heard a hundred, I kind of flipped yeah. and ten. So yeah, it in the past is never I've never seen more than 20 kids. So yeah. Yeah. But you know, it could be different. I don't know. There was a lot, there was about a hundred kids there for read aloud day. Yeah, oh, for read aloud day. Wow. That's good. <laughs> well, the good news is if you if you order them and and don't use them, you know, potentially you've already spent the the money. You can use them for other events. Yeah, that's true. Okay, um, so we've gone through item C through F. Can I get a motion to approve items um, 7C through 7F? I move that we approve. I will make a motion to approve. I second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motions carry. Um, on to 7G, discussion, possible action regarding development and adoption of parameters for good neighbor awards. Um, this is so that we have set and succinct rules for what determines a good neighbor. Because um, sometimes, you know, someone says hello to you and, you know, they might think that that deserves a good neighbor award. And maybe it does. Maybe they're a grouchy person and they finally say hi to you one day. But still parameters <laughs> set up <laughs> so um uh the general parameters um that i have been going over have been uh that there must be an, a notable uh, visible action something we can tie to that person um like our code enforcement officers handing out uh, blankets and sweatshirts and things like that something you can see something that's almost tangible um, in nature. Um, they have to be a resident of Lamarck. That's, that's always been, um, that's always been a, a requirement. 
Um, with the exception, um, I'd like to make the exception for our law enforcement officers, both city and county, because they do come in and do a lot of good. I know the county has been helping us out too um, when we had that dip in officers from, from, from our city station. So um, the residential parameter would be extended to um, to make the exception for law enforcement officers. Um, does anybody have anything else to add to that? Were they Do they like that? Do we have any talk about it? Um, no, I think that's fine. I would make a motion to approve those. Well, before we do that, are we gonna, um, I thought the last time we talked, we talked about having someone fill out a form. Didn't, didn't we talk about that, about the there, form that Colleen They're already, yeah, there already is an online form. Now, do you want to make that mandatory or no, or you don't have to? Um, I would I would like it to be mandatory, and I would like to see what they've done before I sign a certificate willy-nilly, because there was one last year that really totally went against my whole grain about what the Good Neighbor Award is. Yeah, I, think it would, I, I don't think it would hurt to have people, and then it would lead people to the website. That's true. Yeah. So those, um, so we are good with those four parameters, visible, notable action, resident of Lamarck with the exception of our law enforcement officers and mandatory form online. Yes. Hilda? Can I yes. clarify the mandatory form, you're wanting a good neighbor to fill out the mandatory form, is that correct? Yeah, the one on the website. Great, okay. okay. Cool. Okay, how it's set up now is the nominator fills out the form on behalf of the good neighbor. Yeah, that's all we Yeah, have. that's what we mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so, so you're wanting to add a new form? No, no, no. Just, no. To, just to make it mandatory that that's the form. Because sometimes we do have just some people that, you know, talk in our ear and go, hey, all right. And then we put them on the list. And But if we have it specifically from the website, it goes to Colleen, right? It goes to you. So we know exactly what they've done, who they are, and we can put it here with the information like we have this time, which is awesome. It's awesome to be able to say the person's name and say what they've done in the same breath. Like, I love it. So we're not just shouting out names randomly. We, we can continue putting it on the agenda that way. Since okay. if I remember correctly, the form that comes from Colleen is kind of tricky to put into that format, but we can put it on the agenda and then that way, um, Ms. Heron will have the information before she signs the, um, the certificate. Does that satisfy everybody? Satisfies me. Do we have um, do we have a motion to approve item 7G with those parameters? I make a motion. motion to approve. Mm -hmm. I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Mr. Petty John, are you raising your hand to vote or are you trying to yes, say to vote? Okay. Okay. Um, la um, last item under seven, seven H discussion, excuse me, possible action regarding development and adoption of parameters for yards of the month. <coughs> now this is sort of because um, Miss Vivian, who was with us before had exceptional standards for yards of the month because she used the garden clubs exceptional standards for garden clubs yard of the month and she just sort of patched those in to us and and that's how she um that's how she decided um or if someone was nominated she used those sort of rules but um some of them some of them were um that they can they're only allowed to be Lamarck addresses, obviously, so no West Texas City or anything like that. Um, they can't have any standing code violations against them, um, which would be easy enough to check with Miss Kathleen. Um, uh, that they have nice landscaping habitats, et cetera, are suitable. Um, I remember last year, if everyone remembers um, AJ's yard, he has the native plant pollinator yard that's really grown in the front yard. Do you remember that one? A lot of people had a fuss about that, but it was, it's beautiful because oh, yeah. it, it's, it's, 
it was done with a specific purpose to be a monarch way station and a habitat. So those things we would um, accept also, even if it did look overgrown because it's still in code and it suits a purpose. Um, um, quirky, I thought quirky or fun yards as well because there's a lot of people in the community that kind of gussy up their yard with, um, with fun stuff and it doesn't look tacky. It looks, you know, nice and they decorate it for all the random little holidays and stuff too. Um, no junk in the yard, obviously no junk cars, nothing that would go against code, even if they don't have a standing code uh, violation, nothing that would go against code. Um, uh, we need to have uh, prior contact with the nominees. I think that's one of the most important ones is because we want to make sure that these people know they're getting these signs put in their yard and we don't just show up and shove them in the ground. Um, so make sure that um, the form is filled out for them because we have forms for them to online um, and that we have contact with them. <coughs> Even if it's just one of us um, or Kathy picking it, make sure we put it in online. So we have all the information and um, signs placed on the first of the month. This has been this is one I think needs to be adopted as a parameter because in the past we've gone and it's been, it's been very flippant and some people will only get to have their sign for a few weeks. Some people have gotten it for two weeks, some, people, you know, um, to be able to, let's say, approve it here for this month for April's yard in March that way. March or April 1st comes and boom, that sign goes in their yard. So they get to have that sign for the entirety of the month of April. And we're not trying to pick up and shove signs in different time frames of the months, um, but everyone can have their sign for their month. And I think it flows easy. It's, it's, that's been working for you, right, Kathy? Is she there? Can she hear me? Are you talking to Kathy Heron or Kathleen? Kathy. I think she's frozen. Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. She just texted me. She said she lost sound again. Um, I think she's going to try to restart. Do we have March picture? Um, we don't and the she's frozen otherwise i'm sure she'd probably tell you um uh kathy has not picked anyone just because the freeze has pretty much killed everything so we um i talked to her about it too and she had talked about it um maybe giving it a month or so to let people rebuild essentially because that landscaping Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, okay. See, I, I, I lost all y'all sound for a second. So I wasn't sure. So I was texting you back. Um, yeah. With the freeze killing everybody's stuff, I would say let's hold off doing it for uh, March and April and then maybe try again in May. And I had really wanted to try to do some kind of like plant giveaways to as a jumpstart thing just for the families. Um, but you know, I, I don't know. We'll see where we can go with that. I believe before that the commission just took a break after Christmas time. I think they did December and then they didn't do January, February, or March. Do you remember, Miss Kathy? Oh, yeah. Um, so that may be part of your program parameters if you only do that from the spring through December, if it makes sense for you. It's just something that was done in the past. Yeah. Oh, no, no, we would normally do them every month, but with the freeze killing everybody's stuff, it's pretty ridiculous to go put a sign out in front of a dead yard. Yeah. I mean, some of them look nice. They're just dead. <laughs> um, okay, so 
if we just if I'm just going to roll through them once again to make sure we're all on the same page with F or with H. I'm sorry. Um, Lamarck addresses only no standing code violations or apparent code violations. Um, uh, landscaping and habitats like, for example, AJ's lawn um, fit in those parameters with us um, and the quirky and fun yards as well. There can't be any junk filled in the yards. Obviously, that would probably be a code violation of some sort at some point, I'm, I'm sure. Um, we have to have prior contact with the nominee so they know that we are coming to put a metal sign in their yard and signs placed on the first of every month. That, yes. And, yeah. Um, I would also mm -hmm. add that, you know, because there's the online form. So mm -hmm. whoever the nominator is needs to have that contact information so that we can get a hold of those people. Right. Even if it's just you, me, one of us on the commission, that form, we should make sure that that form, need, that form needs to be mandatory, just like on Good Neighbor. Yes? Yes. Okay. So if everyone is okay with those parameters, do I have a motion to approve those parameters for yards of the month? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. All right. Passes. Uh, on to eight requests and announcements. Do we have any requests for items to be placed on future KLMB agenda city events? We have the forms for this, though. Is this necessary now? So that's it, it's it's really um, more for um, community events. So this is where you would say, um, just a reminder, in the events you have coming up in March, um, any community members who passed away that you want to remember. Okay. Uh, there, there is a uh, food drive uh, on a Queen of Peace on Saturday from 8.30 to noon, FYI, and they need more volunteers. 8.30 to noon, you said? Yes, and we need more volunteers. And I do have a uh, an email I can send, and uh, we're asking uh, volunteers to fill out a, a volunteer form. That would be great. So, uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, this is probably uh, for Kathleen. Um, so I've, I've been identifying a couple locations that is continuous dump spots. So in order to get, say, no dumping signs there, is that something that we need to go through the code um, enforcement? Or can we do it through here? No, the code does have no dumping signs. We have ordered some more because we were out of them. So if you have a request for one, you can go onto the request tracker on the city website and Add in there that you'd like to see no dumping signs in a certain area, and we'll try to accommodate that. Okay, okay. It takes a while, though, because we provide the signs for public works, and they're very, very busy, so it won't happen immediately, but they'll get to it as soon as they get a, get a chance. Okay? Okay. okay. Let, me ask, let me ask this. Is that is that something that I could help with if they're backed up to where I could possibly help put the signs out? No, sir. It's it's a, the city has to do it because it'll be in the city easement. Okay. And, and you'd be, be attaching some of them are attached to city signs, so the city okay. has to do it. So okay. Thank you for the offer. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's all I have. Yeah. If we if we end up uh, low on budget for some reason, we can um, make note of that and we'll add an agenda item for the board to discuss um, if it comes to that. I have a question slash request. Since this section, since we have the new forms that all the commissioners have to put new agenda items and, and, and uh, events on there, can we change the wording up just a little bit? Is that possible? On, on number eight? On number eight? No, that is actually set by the Texas Open Meetings Act. That's okay. a shortened form of it. So no, the wording is what, what the statute is, yeah. Just curious. Uh, all right, then does anybody else have any announcements? I know uh, 
Neighborhood Baptist Church is having a community fair and vaccination site March 27th from 10 to 2. It's still tentative though. I need to check, uh, get with them and see. I know CBS and Lamarck, they're offering walk-in appointments for the COVID vaccine as yes, well. They yes, they are. And the line's not long at all there. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. Anybody else? All right. Well, thanks everybody for being here. I guess we can go ahead and this went really quick, guys. Um, <laughs> I guess we can go ahead and uh, do I have a motion to adjourn this meeting at 6.46 p.m.? I move to adjourn. Um, All in favor? Uh, aye. Aye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Have a blessed Bye. time.